Hi again, everybody. This is the Big Idea, Big Moves podcast. I'm Jamie Allison, and this is the destination for high performers. We talk to people from different genres, different niches, different backgrounds, all people that are redefining success in their areas and, and finding really cool things that we can convey to the audience so that you can take things away and action them in your own lives. And, and today we have one of those guests. It's going to be really cool. Um, again, we talk to everybody from athletes to people in entertainment to um, people that are CEOs. And, and so this is a really good mix that we've had in the last little while. So just before we jump into that, uh, a couple of quick things that we have to make sure that we do. We've got um, some great supporters of the podcast, one being Plum IO. Um, and uh, they help if you're an organization right now who's really trying to find people matching their roles that have high potential. So really they take purpose-driven leaders just like you, um, and they help them f quantify human potential. Um, and so they look at transferable skills like adaptability, um, communication, innovation, some of those things so that you can actually find where someone's um, track will go while they're with you. So uh, a pretty cool um, thing, whether you're hiring, workforce planning, doing development, or having to reorganize right now. Take a look at it. You can go to, again, it's www plum.io or you can go to our website which is www.bigideabigmoves.com and you can see the link there. The other thing is is as you go through these different episodes, um, this episode and any other ones that you've gone through, you'll see that a lot of people are starting to re take take stock of what they want to do moving forward. Um, and we have a really good solution for that. There's a high performance planner on there if you go into the enrichment zone um, on the website. And it's basically a, a planner that includes a, um, a day schedule, a morning schedule, uh, helps you set goals, has even evening journals, lots of cool stuff on there. Um, so take a look at that. And again, it's uh, at www.bigideabigmoves.com and it's on the enrichment page. You'll see it right there. So uh, so we'll, we'll jump into um, our, our guest today is, is uh, um, Stacey Mystician. And she's, a, she's an actor. You'll know her from that. Her, she's probably most famous for her uh, character, Caitlin. And Ryan on Degrassi. Um, so she kind of grew up alongside, especially to start in Canada, um, along uh, Canadians of, of uh, our vintage, I'll kind of say. Um, and, and then over time, probably around the world, because it was a, a, a very popular show, uh, all of those different iterations that have happened with it as well. Um, and one thing that we're going to talk a lot about today is that Stacey has um, kind of transitioned her life into now um, taking her love of fitness and wellness and, and uh, um, you know, launching a, a coaching and online training uh, a business as well. So, um, so really cool. And, and again, thank you for taking the time today, Stacey. I know that you're a, you're a mom as well. So, so taking time out can sometimes be uh, a little more difficult. Mom. Yeah. Yeah. That's your full-time job, I guess, is right. How to, how to be a mom of, it's a mom of two. Am, am I right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just two. Very cool. Uh, but they're young, uh, six and eight. So they keep me busy. I guess, I guess. Well, uh, and I do know that over the last little while you have, you've worked in fitness as in kind of the big box fitness and things like that over time. And, um, but now you've, you've kind of ventured into this um, kind of more kind of health and fitness online and, and coaching business yourself. And why, why the transition now? Well, a few things. It's, it's been a long, it's been a very long journey to get here. Um, Right before I had kids, I was starting to get into the fitness. Um, I'd moved back to Canada after deciding, you know, I wasn't into the acting anymore. That's a whole other story and adventure and into itself. And I moved back to Canada. I got certified as a personal training specialist by CanFit Pro. Um, did my exam kept having to pee during the exam <laughs> because I realized right after I was pregnant. Wow. And so that kind of changed my plans. Um, and I, I kind of put the fit, I was still in the fitness industry, but I wasn't training. Um, and, uh, and then of course the pandemic hit. So I, I was being a mom full time for, for a while. And then I was like, you know, I really, I really want to be around adults again. I really want to start working. And I, I, I need to, you know, make sure that I'm staying in shape. It's important to me. It's always been important to me. And um, then the pandemic hit. And again, this was right after I got recertified, uh, this time as a personal training specialist and a health and uh, a healthy 
eating and wellness coach. Mm -hmm. And then um, the pandemic hit and I was uh, having to rethink everything. Yeah. Uh, so in a way that was good because it really made me sit down and think, okay, how do I want to do this? What do I really want to do and what's going to work for myself and clients? And uh, aligning myself with some really good people, including uh, Nick Cornell from um, Trainer Plus app, and sitting down and having time to finally finish my website. Um, you know, pieces, things that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Finally, I had the time to kind of like sit down and make myself do it and stop procrastinating because I'm a huge procrastinator. <laughs> well, and, and a lot of your clients are probably almost going through that same process at the same time, right? A lot of people are, are taking this time to figure out how do they move forward stuff, like whether it's, it's sure. in your space or in others. Sure. So it, I think it's, it's been good in a lot of ways. I mean, it's, it's horrible that we're all having to deal with this and it's very stressful. And uh, so now more than ever, it's more important that people are, you know, staying active both mentally and physically. Uh, but it also has been a time of um, self-reflection for, for everybody. You know, we really have to rethink things and that can be good and bad. Yeah. Um, yeah hopefully good for a lot of people though, in the long run. Well, and, and you, I, I know that you've been pretty open, I think about how, um, you know, fitness and wellness has, has helped you from, um, you know, you talked, uh, I think in, in uh, other interviews about how, when you were on, even when you were on Degrassi and as you were moving up that you had, you dealt with anxiety and people didn't know that at the time. And, and if you have anxiety, you, you continue to deal with that. And that's something that, that I think you've been able to offset by some of this. And, and that'd be important for people to know as well is, is what that can do for you, having good fitness and, and that outlet. Uh, absolutely. Um, so yeah, my uh, segue into the fitness world was largely because of my own anxiety and abusing myself physically and mentally all throughout the show. Um, towards the end of the show, I don't know if people noticed, I got skinnier and skinnier. <laughs> I was anorexic, bulimic. I was popping about nine to 10 laxatives like a day. Um, wow. binging. I was just doing everything because I felt, um, I was putting pressure on myself, but then there's also the outside pressure, you know, people that comment, um, it's like, wow, you, you're a lot bigger in real life, or you look a lot skinnier on TV, you know, comments that are meant to be complimentary that, you know, when you're sensitive, like I am and you're young, you, you take them to heart. And I really felt like I had to, be a certain way. A lot of it actually also comes down to control. I was feeling a lack of control in my life through uh, what was going on in my own family. Uh, when the show ended too, there was like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? I felt like at least I can control my body. Um, so now what I'm trying to, what I want to convey to, to people is, how to respect your body. It's a very different relationship. And that's what I have taken years to learn for myself. Um, it's not about controlling your body. It's about respecting your body and what it can do for you. You have to work with your body to make it do what you want it to do. And it's not about necessarily being slim or, or looking a certain way. It's about being healthy and having the energy and helping those, those feel good endorphins um, you know, to stop the naysaying in your brain that might tell you like, I'm not good enough, or I, I can never do this. The brain and the body, I mean, they work together. So that's what I'm really trying to, to help people learn. And how, oh, um, because of your experiences and, and where you are with that, and, and because you have, you have kids now, mm -hmm. um, how how have you almost reset kind of that and and how do you how do you kind of build that relationship where you know through your kids that um that they are benefiting from your experience in those areas i think just showing them the importance of being active and they're teaching me stuff i mean what's really good is that like my biggest thing is always being too hard on myself 
um, like even doing this podcast at first, I'm like, why does he want to talk to me? I mean, look at all these great people he's got on the show. And I have to remember to respect my journey. And so when I'm talking to my kids, how I have to remember, how do I want them to react? You know, if they're, they have a, a project at school, I want to teach them to just be themselves and not, not have to be perfect every time, just learn from their mistakes. And so having my children there and teaching them these things makes me ultra aware as well. Uh, it makes me hyper aware to, to be the same for myself. I mean, I still tend to be hard on myself. So it's a constant reminder, but my, my kids are excellent reminders of that. Yeah, and, yeah. And I think it's good if they see me being active. That's just what I want. I don't, they don't need to be great athletes. They don't have to run a marathon. I don't care about any of that stuff. I just want them to know that um, there are things they can do to help them feel better. If they're feeling anxious about something, um, there are coping mechanisms. And that's more what I want to um, relay to them. Yeah, no, I, I and I, I think that's that's the important part. Is there's everybody has stuff that you know they can they can transfer to somebody else because everyone's experience is different. And um, and and you mentioned at the um, uh, at the end of the show, one of the things that that would have been a, I would assume a pretty difficult thing was. Um, you know, people listen to this all over the world. They probably know about it, but they also know, might not know how popular that show was in Canada and how, um, you know, when it suddenly finished, and I know that you've been on different iterations since then, was that was that a really difficult transition when suddenly you go from, it, you know, being such in the spotlight, I guess, to suddenly not being in the spotlight as much? For sure, for sure. And I mean, even though we saw it coming, we all knew that there was going to be an end in sight. Yeah. But when it actually happens, um, I mean, I literally grew up on the show. Yeah. I was 10 when I started on kids. And you weren't, you weren't acting, right? The, uh, originally. Like when you, when you first were chosen for that, you weren't in no. acting school or anything no. like that. I, I think a lot of people don't realize that that's how the show was built. No, we were definitely not professional actors. Yeah. And that's what they wanted. They just wanted, you know, natural kids. And they kind of trained us over the years. They would do like workshops with us and, yeah. you know, you learn as you go. But I'd always been interested in acting. I feel mm -hmm. like I was just, it was my natural, you know, I was a really good reader um, loved doing like the little school plays. So it was a natural progression. Um, but yeah, so almost like 20 years I'd been doing this show. Um, and, um, it, so yeah, when it came to an end, I think a lot of us, some people went to school. I had plans of, of going to school. I applied to the Ryerson, um, for broadcasting. I got accepted twice that I changed my mind and I was going to go to the, the George Randolph school of, of dance and acting there too. But then I felt, mm, it wasn't, I, I kept getting jobs. Like I'd get little jobs here and there. And then I'd be like, I can't commit to school. I was, I had a fear of commitment and I just couldn't do it. Um, and I was so used to having that, that job that I could rely on. And suddenly when I didn't have that and that regular paycheck, um, it was scary. And um, I just had to rely on bits and pieces. And one thing that was really hard for me in particular, I am not a good salesperson. <laughs> and as an actress, one of the things you really have to do is sell yourself. You have yeah. to be confident. You have to put yourself out there. And, you know, I didn't have to audition that much when I was on the show. So that was also a new thing, having to go back out there and sell myself and audition and wasn't good at it. I don't think I was very good at it. Sometimes, sure, but other times. And I hated it because it caused me anxiety. So it was just a recipe for disaster. And also, I wasn't sure I wanted to do it. So I was wrestling with all these things in my head. Like, I've been doing it for so long. I don't even know if this is what I really want to do. So my brain tends to go in many different directions at once, mm -hmm. which makes it hard to focus. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But really, I was lost for a long time. And I went to LA. I lived in LA, finally, for like 11 years. Um, still, I, I've had 
so many different jobs, yeah. <laughs> so many crazy, weird <laughs> jobs that you couldn't even imagine. I've tried them all. It's, it's, I've had a quite interesting life, to, to be honest. Yeah. Not great, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. But learning experience, for sure. I was going to say, that's, that's a big part of it, right? Is you take something <laughs> away from each of them. So that's, that's a good thing. So um, do you find it, uh, is it, is it odd how connected people are so much with like your journey now? Because I'm assuming you probably also have a lot of people that um, are, are interested a lot in that transition for you, like how they felt they may have grown up with you at a time, but have also maybe kind of seen that in, in parallels with you now that, you know, you're, you're at, at the spot you are in your life now. Is that strange that other people who you don't really know, think they know, know you from that? Always, but um, in a way now I can embrace it. Now that I'm more confident in knowing what else I want to do and what's important to me, yeah. It doesn't, um, it doesn't affect me as much. If, if anything, I'm hoping I can parlay that people that are interested in me from the show. I'm hoping I can just kind of um, do what I'm doing and, and, and kind of encouraging them to, to, you know, to be active or to help yeah. themselves and in other ways. And yeah. um, if I can get an audience, you know, it's however you can get an audience. If you want, if you, if you're, trying to do something that you like and is positive, then it doesn't really matter where they're coming from. Right. So it's good. And, and um, so is there a particular person through your, through your journey that you have really looked up to that has, has helped you get where you are now? Is there, is there somebody out there you can think, oh, that was a real mentor for me as I've, I've went through some of the challenges in my time? Sure. Um, Grayson, I'm doing an interview, honey. Go get daddy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just standing there. Oh my gosh. Um, yes. Okay. So it's kind of funny. Uh, there are a couple people that I've grown up with, and yet, so uh, there's Amanda Steptoe who played Spike on the show. And what's yeah. funny is our characters rarely interacted on the show because she was her character was a year older than mine, and she was like the punk rock. Yeah. one with the spiky hair yeah we had like maybe one or two episodes where you know she was actually quite pissed off at my character <laughs> 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 but when we both started working on the next generation yeah. um we really bonded I, first because we were like the only adults on the yeah. show now which yeah. was weird um but we we bonded like we're like sisters it was yeah. it was amazing and um she helped me through a lot of hard times and and likewise i hope but we were really there for each other we still are mm -hmm. and also um pat which is funny because we were really close growing up on the show yeah but then we kind of went our different uh, we went our different ways after the show ended and i hadn't really uh talked to him much in a while until again the next generation yeah where suddenly we were brought together again. And there was a bit of almost awkwardness, I feel, between him and I. Um, yeah. where, but, where do you uh, think that came from? Um, from not being together for so long. And I, I felt like there was some animosity almost between maybe how our relationship working together had ended. Um, stuff that we just we hadn't talked in so long and it was really good to get together and kind of clear the air you know like are you angry at me are you mad because um you know did you feel i was using you to just you know uh for advice and stuff it, it just it's weird when you're really close and then you just kind of go your different ways and you're distant for a while and and you hear things that people are saying oh he's mad at you and this so i wasn't sure what was true and what wasn't and we we cleared the air and I mean, now more than ever, he's kind of my guru for, for setting up online business and yeah. website info. I'm always asking him for advice and he's so great about helping me out. We started doing comic cons together. Yeah. So yeah. that was also such a great outlet for me, you know, and I'm full-time mommy and then, yeah, yeah I get, get to, to go, go away, away for a little bit, have some, have some adult time. That's just yes. you, right? 
Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, and well, actually, that's one thing. How often do you get asked? Well, maybe the two questions. How often do you get asked even now? Like, do people still recognize you and then ask you about Joey as if he's this person <laughs> you should kind of remember that way? Um, or does it change now because, um, you know, of the, the other iterations where they ask you about if you know Drake or not? Like, is there, what, well, are, what are the two yeah. things? Because it seems like it depends on probably who's asking, I guess, right? Yeah, I I still get it all. I get yeah. you know, like how's Joey? Yeah, because <laughs> you know people will still you know they wanna they wanna hold on to that. It's very uh, nostalgic for them, and I get it. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. I, I can still be their Caitlin. He can still yeah, be yeah. Their Joey. But as long <laughs> as they, I think now with the maturity, because a lot of you know it's largely my generation that know that they they can respect that. Yes, we're we're in different professions now. We do different things and. Yeah. Yeah, um, but they might slip and still call us by our character yeah, still name. The, still the, the yeah, the separation isn't always there, but hey, it's, it's, it's probably there. getting closer. So uh, nowadays, um, how do you how do you set goals for yourself? Like if you're you know you were talking about you're setting up kind of online business stuff and all of those things, which is um, you know so you've probably um, ha have to do a fair amount of of just kind of setting up you know goals. What do I want to accomplish over the next? Life? How do you tackle that yourself? For sure. Okay. So for myself, I get overwhelmed very easily, which also leads to procrastination. Yep. So one thing that really works for me, I, I have to write things down. I'm a list maker. I, I have my agenda and a weekly agenda and I have to write down, okay, these are the goals that I want to accomplish. I have to break it down because I've got too many thoughts in my head of things that I want to do. So I have to break it down step by step and not beat myself up if I don't get everything done on that That's day. Yep. I just have to know, okay, these are the main things that I want to get done today uh, because they have to get done by maybe like this deadline or whatever. And I, I, it's very satisfying to be able to, you know, check things off as you go through them. Um, but I need that, I need that um, visual to, uh, to help me first of all, remember and, and to stay focused. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And do you do? Do you find um, is that easy to do, or do you have to combine something for your family? Because that's the other thing too. Is like I think of in my in my family, we have our um, we have our calendar that everything gets put on because you know yeah. our kids are kind of going around and doing different things. Um, how do you mesh the two of those together when you're you have your own stuff? Your husband, I know, is is also busy as well because he's he's an actor. So how do you how do you mesh those things together when everybody has busy lives and uh, and you want to get things done in a at least in a certain way? It's well, there's a trade off. There's got to be that give and take. So with James, my husband, I have to know like listen, I'm going to be doing this from this time to this time. You have to book that off for me. Yeah. And, and likewise. So we have to just, it's a lot of communication. Um, on my list is also probably things that I have to do for the family, not just for myself. It's like, right. I have to remember to do this. Um, so I have to include all of it. And then of course we have our separate, yeah, our family calendar that's on the wall. So there's, yeah. there's a number of lists, yeah. <laughs> but my main one will be mostly like the main, main things that have to get done that yeah. day, but yeah. a lot of communication for sure between yeah. everybody. Yeah, it's, uh, it can be a busy, busy time and uh, um, you know, it's <laughs> trying to, to measure them all off when, when you can. So, um, and so now when you're um, with your business, maybe just tell us a little bit about, you know, how, um, um, what is it that, uh, that you've, you've kind of built? I know you have um, workouts online, things like that. So tell us a bit about, um, you know, what you've built over the last little while. So what I... I'm really enjoying doing right now is I, I have clients that I train virtually. So, um, and I work, I have an app, uh, it's called trainer plus app and a lot of gyms and, and trainers use it. Yep. And it's been fantastic for me to be able to program, uh, customized workouts for clients. So I can do an assessment with them virtually. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of see if they have any imbalances, know, note if they have any injuries, um, and uh, based on what their goals are, we'll discuss what their specific goals are. It can be anything, whether they want to lose weight, whether they want more energy with their kids. There's a number of different things people 
that are important to, you know, to each individual. So taking that into account, I use this app and I can make, I program um, uh, a workout designed for their needs. And what I've really found that, that I've enjoyed through this process is it, people may not realize how much work goes into designing a program because the beauty of it is um, you have to start off you know, based on, you know, if it's a beginner level, you have to make sure they're going to be able to do it and not get discouraged, not hurt themselves. Yeah. And then each time to make it interesting, you don't want them to get bored. You can't change it up too much, but you have to change it ever so slightly each time to progress. It's yeah. all about progression. So an engagement, I, I would assume too, right? To kind of even keep them engaged because you're exactly. their, their person to do that. Exactly. Like maybe they hate doing lunges. Maybe they can't right. do lunges because they have bad knees, whatever it is. I have to take that into account. And I have a chart for every client because every client is very individual. I have somebody who has high anxiety. She can't get her heart rate uh, up too high or she'll have yeah. a panic attack. Yeah. So again, different workouts for different people. Now I have a YouTube channel now where I'm offering free workouts and so I try and keep them as a mix of cardio and resistance for the most part yeah. that offer modifications. But I understand not everybody can do, I mean, there's so many online programs out there and a lot of them are cookie cutter. You have to be careful. Not everybody's going to be able to do moves in, in a lot of these, these online workouts. And I, I appreciate that. So I try my best to make them um, as um, usable to, to anybody but that's where the, the customized workouts are more beneficial because then you can really hone in on what's going to help that person. Yeah. Well, and what, um, I, mean, I mean, the thing that probably informs a lot of your work this way is, is um, stuff that you've learned over time. Is there, is there one thing that you find, um, you know, that while if, if I were to say the biggest thing I've learned up to, up to this point that probably translates to how I help my clients and all of those things, is there, is there something you can kind of point to about yourself that you've learned? Oh, for sure. Well, I think I already touched on it, but um, yeah, don't beat yourself up. Yeah. Don't be so hard on yourself. Don't be, um, you got to really watch the negative talk and especially people that suffer from depression and anxiety. It's really easy to just say like, I can't do this. I'm never going to be like that person. That's the other thing. Don't compare yourself to other people because it's too easy to say, uh, on the other hand, um, you know, I've got it good compared to this person. Look what that person's going through. Why? I don't know why I'm struggling, why I shouldn't be feeling this way, but you have every right to be feeling the way you're feeling. You just have to learn, everyone has different coping mechanisms. So you have to address why you're feeling a certain way and, and, and deal with it or else it's gonna block you. It's gonna keep you from doing what you wanna do. So that's, you know, hopefully the message I, I, I wanna send out to people is, um, uh, teaching them different coping mechanisms. I mean, staying active and just moving is, is, I think, one of the best things we can do just for our brain and our body. But it's not going to be the solution, the whole solution for, you know, for people that are struggling. That's yeah. just one piece of the puzzle. Well, and, and, and you talk a lot about, um, you know, tied with that is, is kind of respecting your body and what it can do for you and, and how that does can lead to better mental health and all of those things as well. Um, you know, the one thing we always ask our guests is, are there a couple of actionable things that, that somebody can do after they listen to this? And, and if you were to say, um, you know, someone's deciding they, they want to start that journey, that they do want to do something about, you know, how they, they move forward with kind of respecting themselves and their body, what, what would you say would be a couple of things they could do? Um, first of all, just start. Don't like, if, if you're thinking about doing something, you know, just dip your toe in. Don't, don't feel like you have to like run a whole marathon. Like just, just start. If you don't finish, that's okay. The hardest part is starting. And just remember that. Yeah. Um, sleep. I went about two years. <laughs> it feels like my first child was not a sleeper. And I had a doctor who even told me she thought I was severely depressed because I started crying in the doctor's office. Yeah. But I realized after, you know, she didn't have kids and she didn't know me very well. And she just kind of jumped to that, which is actually kind of a dangerous assumption at that place I was in right there. But 
um, the point is sleep affects our, our, our mood so severely and it's so, so important. Um, not that everybody, it's going to be that easy for people to get sleep, but just where you can just know how important it is. And if you are feeling a certain way, it could just be because you are damn tired. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And there's things to do first, right? Is maybe yeah. you do need that little chunk of time to yourself or you need to be able to, you know, to get that additional sleep and see see what happens after that before yeah. you getting enough sleep will help yeah. you do everything else better. I mean, it'll yeah. affect how you're thinking and it'll also affect affect you physically, of course, too. So it all goes yeah. hand in hand. Oh, that's that's great advice. Well, uh, you know, I will tell you this this has been a great conversation. I mean, um, you know, I, I think people take away some awesome stuff so far. Um, I, I would maybe we can revisit is if people are are looking at kind of connecting with you and and connecting with um, maybe you as a coach, things like that. What what are some of the best ways to do that, Stacy? Uh, absolutely. Uh, check out my website, stacymystician.com. And there's a way to contact me on there. I have coaching packages on there. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, I'm also on Instagram at Stacy Mystician, Facebook at Stacy Mystician. Yeah. And um, those are really the best ways to, uh, to get hold of me. Cool. And, well, uh, and we'll... I'm on YouTube, Stronger with Stacy Mystician, uh, for free workouts. So there's no excuse. You don't want to miss that one. That was <laughs> the one that they can click on right away and see how it works. So, um, so what we'll do as well is we'll put all of those links in the uh, show notes when they go out as well, so that that way people can kind of see it if they haven't had a chance to write it down. Um, uh, otherwise, again, thank you. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that on the podcast because then anytime we have these awesome guests like Stacy, then you'll be the first to hear about it. Um, we do it every week. So, uh, so make sure that you do that and uh, also check out W www.bigideabigmoves.com. Um, you can subscribe through that, and uh, it will take you what to whatever platform you want to uh, want to see it on. So uh, again, Stacey, I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, you know, and, you. and taking the time out of your day. So thanks so much. All right, and we'll talk again on Big Idea, Big Moves. Wow.